for this video, we consider the Celo theory for a simple group of order 168. In previous videos, we considered a concrete realization of a simple group of order 168. For here, we won't need a concrete realization. We're just going to need the order of the group is 168, it's simple, and the Celo theorems. Now, the results we want to get to, I want the number of Celo P subgroups for each prime that divides 168. So we'll have n sub 7 is 8, n sub 3 is 28, n sub 2 is 21. Then I want to consider elements of a given order. So the orders that can arise are going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, and 7. We have the numbers of each elements of a given order. And then we'll have how each set of elements of a given order breaks up into conjugacy classes. So this third column will verify a result from one of our previous videos. Now, with the third column, we should confirm the simplicity property just using this. So if I had a normal subgroup, okay, we can write that as a disjoint union of conjugacy classes. We should show that if we take, okay, we have to have the identity in that normal subgroup. So I'll take the one and any combination of these other numbers. The only way we can get a divisor of 168 is if we have one or 168. Now, we have three main tools. First, we have the Celo theorems. So P is a prime that divides the order of our group. Then a Celo P subgroup is gonna be a subgroup of order P to the highest power that divides the order of our group. First Celo theorem states, there exists a Celo P subgroup. Second Celo theorem, I'll just state the consequences that we're gonna use. Well, that all Celo P subgroups are conjugate and every subgroup of order P to a power is contained in some Celo P subgroup. Finally, third Celo theorem, so this is going to be where we do our numerical work. The number of Celo P subgroups divides the order of the group, and the number of Celo P subgroups is congruent to one modulo P. Next main tool, we are consider counting orbits under conjugation by elements in the group. So when we conjugate, that's going to preserve properties of certain sets. So for instance, if we consider subgroups of a fixed order, Okay, if I conjugate, they all map back to other subgroups of that fixed order, so I can consider orbits there. We could also consider elements of a fixed order. So here, if we conjugate, okay, the new element has the same order as the original, so those sets are going to break up into orbits also. Finally, we're going to want to know about the structure of groups of order 8, so that will just assume and then I'll explain more when we get to it. In the big picture, we break our work into six parts. For the first part, I consider Celo 7 subgroups and their normalizers. Now, to find n sub 7, we can use the Celo theorems. First, n sub 7 divides 168, but is not divisible by 7. So we narrow it down to these candidates. And then we further narrow it down to 1 or 8 because n sub 7 is congruent to 1 modulo 7. Now, because g is simple, I can't use the one, otherwise our Celo 7 subgroup is a normal subgroup. So that gives us our 8. Next, we can count the number of elements of order 7. If we take any two Celo 7 subgroups, okay, they're cyclic groups of order 7, since 7 is prime, they intersect in either the identity element or the entire Celo 7. So that means we have 8 subgroups times 6 elements. Okay, we throw away the identity element, and that gives us 48 elements. Next, consider the normalizer of a Celo 7. So our recipe for counting the number of Celo 7 subgroups is equal to the order of the group divided by the normalizer of any Celo 7 subgroup. Okay, you can use any one you want. So let's call one H sub 7. That'll give us the order of the normalizer is equal to 168 over 8, or 21.
Now, that gives us immediately, there's no element in our group of order 14. If there were, then I'd have a cyclic subgroup of order 14. That would mean we have an element of order two that normalizes some CELO seven, and then two would have to divide 21. So that doesn't happen, so we get this fact here. Finally, structure of our normalizer. Okay, well, you have two options. Either it's not abelian. If it's abelian, then it has to be a cyclic subgroup of order 21. Part two, we showed the normalizer of a CELO7 is non-abelian. We'll do this by showing that each CELO3 is contained in one of our normalizers. Then we'll count the number of CELO3s. We have each CELO7 is contained in its normalizer. So there are going to be eight CELO7s and eight normalizers. If we intersect any two of our normalizers, we get either the identity element or a CELO3. Now, if I consider the CELO 7s as a set of eight points, our simple group acts on the set by conjugation. So if I take the conjugate of a CELO 7 subgroup, I get back another CELO 7 subgroup. I can restrict that group action to a CELO 3, which I'll call H3. Under the action with this group, the orbits are going to have one or three elements in them. So, the number of elements in an orbit has to divide the order of their group. Now, how many ways can we write eight as a sum of ones and threes? We have a sum of eight ones, a sum of five ones and a three, or a sum of two ones and two threes. In any event, we're gonna have at least two ones in our sum. So what does a one mean? A one is gonna be a CELO7 subgroup, such that our H3 acts by just sending that CELO7 back to itself. So that means the H3 is contained in the normalizer of that CELO7. Now, that shows our first part. Every CELO3 is contained in one of our normalizers, and in fact, it'll be contained in at least two. Now, if we assume the normalizer of our CELO7 is abelian, okay, then it's isomorphic to Z mod 21, and if we count elements and their orders, we'll see that we have two elements of order three. So let's put our numbers together here. We're gonna have exactly one CELO3 in a given normalizer. I have eight normalizers, so they're gonna be at most eight CELO3s. Now, we know that each CELO3 is gonna be in at least two of these normalizers. So if I consider that in our CELO theory, we're gonna have to have that the number of CELO threes is equal to four. Now, using our counting formula here, that means the order of the normalizer of a CELO three is equal to 42. I wanna do our same counting here, but let's reverse the direction. So I have four CELO threes. I can let some CELO seven act on this set. The only way I can have orbits here Okay, the orbits have to have one or seven elements. The only way we can partition four is gonna be as a sum of ones. So that means if I take any CELO seven, it's gonna be in the normalizer of our CELO three. Now that means every element of order seven is in that normalizer. How many elements of order seven do we have? We have 48. 48 is greater than 42. And that's gonna give us a contradiction. So we can't have that the normalizer of our CELO7 is abelian. So non-abelian. Part three, we show that n sub three equals 28. Now, let's fix one of these normalizers. We know it's non-abelian. So CELO theory says it contains one CELO7 and seven CELO3s. Now, n sub three divides 168, but is not divisible by three. So we narrow it down to the following candidates. Because n sub three is congruent to one modulo three, we further narrow it down to one, four, seven, or 28. Now, can't be one by simplicity. Our count here says it can't be four, so it's seven or 28, so let's assume it's equal to seven. That means 
all of our CeeLo3s are contained in this normalizer. If we consider this inclusion, so we have a given CeeLo3 contained in the normalizer. There are no intermediate subgroups, so that means any two CeeLo3s are going to generate this subgroup. That's a problem because that'll say that there can only be one normalizer. We know that there's eight, so I get a contradiction. So that means we're going to have to have 28 equal to n sub 3. Now, with that, we can count the number of elements of order 3. So we have 28 subgroups times two elements, so 3 minus 1 because we throw away the identity, to get 56 elements. We also have the order of the normalizer of a CeeLo 3 is going to be 168 divided by our 28, so we get a 6.